Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Uh, we're a couple days from M21 coming out. I will be participating in the early streamer event, so we'll have a lot of content with new cards and new decks. Uh, it's usually a lot of fun uh, playing against a lot of big name uh, magic personalities, so that'll be on June 24th, so do swing by if you can. Uh, so what we have today is a deck that I've been playing offline. It's kind of one of my pet decks that I've been brewing. Uh, it is a Rakdos Red Black, mostly black, uh, Phyrexian Obliterator controly ish kind of shell. Um, so I got up to like 1300 Mythic with it. I've fallen down to 99% because I haven't played in a couple days. Um, but the shell of the deck is built around the Historic Anthologies card Phyrexian Obliterator. Four black mana, 5-5 five, five, Trample. Uh, whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents, meaning your opponents generally don't want to attack into this or block with this. Um, so kind of to play around it, we have a lot of kind of versatile removal threats. Uh, Murderous Rider and Bedevil can hit a whole bunch of things. Heartless Act can deal with its creatures. Dragonfire hits Planeswalkers and creatures. Um, Dusk Legion Zealot's a two mana creature that draws us a card. Fenlurker attacks the hand. Croxa attacks the hand as well as is a threat afterwards. Uh, Chupacabra is removal on a creature. And then you have Extinction Event main. So the nice thing about Extinction Event is against a lot of the aggro decks, you can pick and choose the number so you can keep around an Obliterator. Um, something recently I've been trying out is two Karn Scion of Urza. Um, so I had Timorek Calls of the Dead in here originally uh, to uh, get like Croxes into the graveyard, kind of fuel it, but without ways to get stuff out of the graveyard, it wasn't as good. So uh, Karn is a way to generate card advantage as well as a win condition on its own. Uh, Angrath is a card that I've quite liked. It attacks like the opponent's hand. It also gets rid of creatures by like stealing them and then forcing a sack. And then the ultimate can basically force out like a big burn damage. One Chandra on the top end. Uh, this is mainly a concession to the blue base decks. Generally counterspell decks are pretty good against us. I'm two and two against mono blue thus far. Uh, it is a little bit of a non bow when you minus three, because if you hit your own obliterator, the source of dealing damage is us, so we have to sacrifice three things. So it's only ever come up once, but I still won because I was far enough ahead that it made sense to do that. Um, the one card I was trying to test out was Cavalier of Night as like a top end threat to sack some of these stuff, but also to gain some life. Um, this is something I want to try out because the other card I was going to test out in this slot was the Eldest Reborn. Um, so each opponent sacks a creature or planeswalker, discards a card, and then you get to reanimate something. Um, so this is something I want to try out. Generally, I, I feel like some life is a good installation here. Um, so I'm going to keep trying this out for a couple more games. Uh, mana base wise, some duels. I'm playing a couple trinomes to cycle if need be, and then three castles. Um, we're generally a grindier deck, so drawing cards off castle is beneficial. Uh, Duress. So basically the two worst matchups thus far I've played, I'm 12 and 6 with the deck. Uh, four of those six losses have been to either Mono Blue or uh, Nexus of Fate. So the Duress comes in against those matchups, it's cheaper than Agonizing Remorse. Um, Soul Guide Lanterns for Graveyard decks, Cast Down, Noxious Grafts, just more removal, Cry versus the more aggressive decks. Uh, Goblin, Rune Blaster, I started with two, I've gone up to four now. It's very good against Nexus and the control decks. It gives you an angle to attack your opponent on that's not just like... Because um, like what you have in the main deck is like cards like Ravenous Chupacabra that aren't good against the Nexus decks, like a 4-mana 2-2. Two, two. Um, so at least this is a 4-mana 2-1 two, two that also blows up your opponent's lines. And then one Thoughts Distortion uh, against the control decks. So generally what I want to see is Gruul, uh, Vampires, any sort of creature decks, uh, except Mono Blue. Uh, the deck that actually was a little bit of a headache was Rakdos Goblins um, because they had the Death Dweller uh, Chain Whirler combo as well as um, Sideways Monkey Fanatical Firebrand. So they ping the damage to Obliterator. They could sack one thing. Um, they usually have fodder anyways. Um, so it was a way around it. But there's a few matchups where your opponents will just concede because they can't beat an Obliterator. So this hand's fine. Uh, Fenlurker on two, Bedevil on three, potentially Obliterator on four. I'm going to judge this by the fact they're Chandra sleeves, that they're an aggressive deck. So, yeah. So it's probably Gruul.
So Crocs is generally not that good in the aggressive decks. Let's see what the opponent forced. Okay, so it is Gruel. So we need to make a decision here with turn three. How we take that trade? Oh yeah, now we we're in a good spot. If the opponent wants to trade away their mana dork. So I'm going to kill the Zerta. I really hope they get stuck on line now just for that greedy play. So this is usually the part. So the one way they could kind of get around this is with um, Ember Cleave and um, Questing Beast. Might go wide. So this is a chance to do odd. Exile this. And here I'm just going to try to close this game out. They can hit us for two, potentially six, if they have Ember Cleave and Land as their last two cards, but we're winning that race. Um, so this matchup, cast downs come in, noxious grasps. Uh, Cry is actually okay. Um, so I usually cut a Croxa. Cut the Karns. Cut the Angraths. So Angrath's okay because it could steal stuff, but it's a little bit slow overall. I just really want to maximize on removal and then go from there. Um, yeah, we'll go from that. So that turn could have been a little awkward if we didn't draw Extinction Event. Um, so they can go pretty wide and then Ember Cleave something else. Uh, but as long as you have Obliterator, it's pretty good insurance policy. I think we mulligan this. Okay, that sounds fine. Um, I think we get rid of Extinction Event, or Cry here. Extinction Event's more flexible, because even if they go like Zerta, if we were on the play I would have kept the Cry. But really we just need lands with this end. Next turn I can Dragonfire the Pelt Collector. gonna do this now in case they have some sort of pump effect so we're taking five next turn we may be too slow heartless axe pretty good we still need a land I do need to heartless act the bone crusher giant Because that plays better with Extinction Event, being able to wipe these out. But they might just still have Ember Cleave here. Land one time. Good game. <laughs> Should be enough. They could haste this in. Ooh, and Gallia. So the problem is here, so I could Chupacabra, but I'm dead to any, ha so I'm basically dead to any Haster regardless. So I think we just cry here. That's a problem. Okay, nope, so they got us. 
Had the removal. The Phoenix is going to be difficult to deal with. So I need to keep these dragon fires as a priority. Uh, Chandra is fine because it can exile. I think we just run it back there. They literally top decked the worst card. This hand is good. Fenlurker on two, hopefully get them to overextend into a cry. And they mulliganed at least once, so that's good. We can take out another card from their hand. I don't think we want a six drop just yet. We don't have the game kind of wrapped up. So they get rid of a land. Um. Cry is not really that great here. I think we just do this. Just take a block this turn, drop this down next turn. Kill that. Probably. So this is worse if they untap with Rekindling Phoenix. They have two cards left. So this is the Hey, I'm uh, So same idea as the deck I played a while ago, but I've uh, I've been working on it since. So probably 20-30% of the decks changed, particularly the sideboard. Um, originally I built it to deal with Winota, uh, but with Winota not in the format anymore. I uh, had to tweak it a bit. You're seeing more Nexus, like blue-white decks as well. Uh, Saturday I ran into four mono blue decks in a row. Did the opponent time out? Did we time out? What's happening? Mm. I think we just take the damage here. This dork's really fun. I enjoy it a lot. I'm going to take the uh, the trade here if they want to attack. This could be like Questing Beast, Pulp Collector. So they're pretty much out of cards now. So Heartless acts a little awkward here. So I think we just do this. If they attack in here, I can remove three counters. Trade with it there. So now we're kind of into top deck war. Okay, Murderous Rider is good. Going to save that, obviously. Having a removal spell is good.
just gonna do this now so I can play this out next turn, start attacking in, insulating my life total. So I'm actually gonna use this cry now. We're probably not gonna get better targets and I wanna empty my hand so that way I can start drawing off castle. So Cavalier Knight locks it up there. Back into the numbers, 1300. So we saw there, like, other than the Phoenix, uh, I had E to Extinction in the deck at one point, but I ended up lowering uh, some of the removal curve down a bit. Maybe we want another Exile effect instead of the cast down. Let's see how another game goes. If we find that we need the other exile, then I'll go up another Scorching Dragon Fire. We have some flexibility in the two drop removal, so I want to um, see what works out best there. But basically with our deck, what we do is we just kill everything and then eventually escape a Croxa back. Might have made sense on the play to still have Croxa in. It's just it's a bad play on two against Gruul. Because where they're going like Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Zerta, and we're just like discard a card, no board presence. Let's try this out. I could push away lands. That's fine. They got goblins, I, they might be. Um, so I'm actually gonna wait here. Kill it, then if I don't hit something next turn, then I have the Croxa. Okay, so we have dragon fire. I think it just makes sense to protect our life total here. Especially if they're stuck on lands here. Well, let's see how the opponent can deal with this. Don't particularly want to kill this right now. I want them to commit more to the board. If they attack in with Questing Beast, I am more than happy to have them sack four things. Especially an opponent on a mulligan. My guess is they do like the lines and that, and then I'll take them off this Pelt Collector. And then Croxa starts eating at their hand. Yeah. Like, the amount of games that end like that is actually humorous. Um, so same sideboard plan as last time. Uh, Chandra's probably okay. Um, do I want the Chandra? Maybe not on the play. No, I probably want it more than... The fact it can just kill something. Let's do that. 
Crocs is good when you can escape it, but if you can't escape it, then it's not going to do too much. And it's not like we're using Stitcher Supplier. So this hand's fine. It's a little awkward with the mana base, so we do want to find an untapped land, but we're just trying to dig to this extinction event. Yeah, that's perfect. That lets me... Fen Lurker. So I'm going to prioritize Fen Lurker to go after their hand, especially if they drop some Burning Tree stuff here. Try to run them out of gas, either take them off their next land. Galia's pretty good. Let's them refill their hand here. They opt to not get rid of it. We'll most likely find another land. We have our next couple four drops all accounted for. You know, this is probably Embercleave. They don't have double red though. So we're just gonna take a block here. So I'm actually gonna do this. And then extinction event their board. Pretty much done now. I'm just gonna bring out Cavalier at night. I'm gonna decline. I just wanna get the life link going. Uh, we're only at six life. So we're seeing more of Gruul playing this, so I think I want my removal on the sideboard to be exile based. Mm. The conquesting beast. Yeah, they're dead. I was thinking the conquesting beast, but I pretty much have them anyways. Into the 900s. The nice thing is this deck's pretty quick. Actually, let me give Arena a quick reset, and then we'll fire it up again. It's been relatively good, but I uh, just don't want any sort of lag. So you can see in those games there, like when we're playing Gruul, the deck just kind of smashes. Let's make that change and put in the One Piece of Exile instead of the cast down. Actually, Vraska's Contempt is a card. And it gains us two life. Is that too slow, Verse Girl? Four mana. Maybe we do this and then go Scorching Dragonfire or just cast down. Uh, be deaf. Uh, so it's kind of hard to say if this is the best Obliterator deck because I haven't seen too many other Obliterator decks per se. Um, um, like I'm... 14 and 6 now with this deck and I'm 988 on the mythic well 990 now on the mythic ladder um, Grixis Grixis is always tough. I was I was doing okay with this version of Grixis in standard 
um, just like Kroxa, uh, Lazav, and then kind of being a more proactive. I like the flexibility of the removal. Um, hard to say. Uh, I'll probably end up playing, like I have, one sec, what do I have for? I'll probably be playing all of these or as close as to all of these during the early streamer event on Wednesday. So I got like, is it Tempo, Demir Control, Rakdos Control, Selesnia, Counters, Teamer Draw 2, Zorya's Blink, Cats, Ugin, Life Gain. I have a couple Ugin decks, Gruul. I could probably try Grixis as well. Any excuse to run Nicol Bolas. Um, so yeah, what we did is let's test out these changes to the sideboard to Vraska's Contempt. Yeah, you might as well just wait for Fabled Passage. Like, I'm not even playing them in this deck here, partially just because it's a base black deck. All my red sources come from dual lands. Uh, let's fire this up. Kind of waiting too. I don't know if I'm going to... I usually always order the $50 pack, but with... I have all the temples and I have all the fable passage. Usually the first thing, like as soon as a new set comes out, I craft all the lands first and then I get the other cards um, just for like budget decks and stuff. So this hand's probably fine to keep. We basically have two redraws. Chandra is probably a little awkward. Um, hopefully we're not against like mono red aggro. Mind you, with obliterator in hand against mono red, I usually have a, pro a trouble. I gotta remember. I like putting... Um, like I like so like usually like lightning bolt players are playing mono red, but uh, I usually like if I'm playing mono red I put to fairy sleeves or vice versa. Karn's actually not bad, if this is a slower deck, feather. So feather's actually a bit of a problem, because they can get protection, which makes it worse. So I didn't block there. This will get bigger. So. It's more advantageous later. So if they just go like Feather this turn, I'll Chupacabra it. I kind of want them to spend resources here. Fight is one. Okay, so that's definitely something we need to play around. Okay, I got a Danto. So Chandra is good against the Danto because it'll exile. Well, actually, they can make it indestructible, so it doesn't. Get rid of Chupacabra. So with the shields down, I'm going to hit the 10th district here. And then next turn's probably Obliterator. I think we do this. Basically want to force their life where this eventually is not profitable. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's uh, that's a top deck. Untap Chandra uptick. Nice vanguards. Their hands probably all protection spells now. So remember, if you minus your Chandra, minus three, it deals three damage to Obliterator, you do have to sack. Okay, so those are all coming in. In this matchup, Angrath's actually pretty good. I'm going to get rid of Chandra. Like, it's a little too high on curve. Um, Fenlurker's fine. Kind of tempted to get rid of Crocs. So actually, Karn's pretty bad. Because, like, here they can make a big thing. I can steal it and then sack it. It's also another way. 
round. Kind of want the cheap one, so maybe trim a Croxa. Honestly, it's probably just trim both Croxas. Just play one. We need to be able to answer to the board. Yeah, Extinction Event's great. I was a bit dismissive of the card at first, but... Like, double a Danto there and a Paradise Druid and to them just not being able to do anything. Chandra's also pretty decent, like, reach or just a distraction card. Like, even though it's not the best synergy with Obliterator, it's Obliterator is so bad against Mono Blue um, that, like, you usually just side them all out. So having the uncounterable threat, this hand's fine. Cry to clean up their small stuff, hopefully. We also have Bedevil. That's actually great for us that they didn't play anything out yet. They have the awkward mana base situation. If they play a Danto Vanguard, I will one for one cry them. If they play out um, 10th District Legionnaire, then I'll just go on my turn and kill it before they can have a protection spell up. The one thing with this deck, because you're playing both a mix, it's not like the Winota deck where you can play um, Ancient Ziggurat. You have a lot of like protection spells or like instants that make it harder to play Ziggurat. All right, not sure what the opponent's doing, but might have got disconnected there. The Devil's actually really good too. Just the flexibility I really like of these cards. We have like three mana removal that can hit a lot of things. So ideally here, I think they got it. They got timed out. Or they um, got disconnected. The card, I, so I want to try the new Liliana in this deck. Um, instead of the Karns. Uh, so Liliana fuels our own escape. We can discard our own Croxa, its removal, as well as an ultimate that can thread in. We're killing a lot of things. I've also really liked Angrath. It's somewhat underplayed. If we were splashing blue, then I'd be playing um, like Nicol Bolas in this slot. The one thing is like we can lose a little to card advantage, like attrition-based. Yeah, opponent disconnected here We're gonna have a hard time now missing two turns into an obliterator on board and Grath can steal whatever they have next so this should probably put us into like 700 on the ladder now Try to finish up this month in uh, top 1200 range. Come on. Okay, opponent's back in. They go Paradise Street. So... I think what we do here... Attack. Probably just going to cry Carnarium here. 
take them off mana. And then I have Scorching Dragon Fire up. Even if they protect, I can steal it with. Yeah. Opponent's deck's about making something really big, and if we're able to just um, stonewall them with something to sack. Sweet. So into the 700s. Deck continues to impress. So I do like those changes. The Exile seems really good. Um, it could be, but it depends if they get under us. If Because like Reckless Rage isn't that good against us. So they don't really have a clean way of answering Obliterator. Um, and then post board we bring in all this Exile. So Vanguard's not that great. Um, like that game I'd be interested to see because they were on the play. Um, they kind of timed out and didn't really present a clock with their mana base. But, um, like, everything that we have pretty much kills or draws a card or hits at their hand, if not doing multiple things. Um, but basically, like, this will be Liliana in the new set, and then there's the three mana, uh, the two mana exile, I think it's Eliminate, if this is the card. Uh, the two mana exile target creature or planeswalker with three CMC or less. So that'll slot in as well into this deck. And then we have just like two mana kill to fairy, two mana kill any small thing. And then we just scale up to that. Um, not 100% sold on Chandra. I like the can't be countered, but may like Cavalier was actually okay. Like in these games, uh, we did run into Gruul a lot. So the life gain was relevant, um, but there's like along the edges, like this shell, I'm very happy with this and Angrath. Like these are the, the flex slots, I'd say, that I'll keep trying out. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up this deck. Um, I'm gonna try to, uh, demo another deck that I've been working on um, and then we can run a couple games with that. So I'm just gonna wrap up this uh, segment and then we'll pop into the next deck.